Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This time we'll be talking about Hata Lega and their decommissioning plan, as well as the share price dive of Emulus. So guys, we do not own any shares in either Hatlega or Emulus. Okay guys, it's that time of the month again and we're going to be covering a deep dive on Timecom and PPHB. And you can get the 20% discount, which is before 15th of May. Make sure to check it out. The links will be in the description and comments down below where we'll be talking about the fundamentals of both of these companies and just to tease you a little bit, we own one of this company in Fire Pro. So make sure you check it out. The links are both in the description and comments. Oh well, guys, uh, I can't believe I forgot it. But now what I say or Jonathan say should be taken as financial advice. Now without further ado, let's go. So Hatla Lega, um, funny enough, if I read the announcement, it sounded like something bad right mm. like, oh the plant shut down or we're gonna close it it's a sign that business is not doing well but the market saw it as oh now supply is gonna start uh, reducing as a result yeah right so what happened was um i'll let you describe it later on but you know over the past uh five days it's up quite a bit right 13 percent on a company that is uh, multi-billions uh, it's a lot of money mm. so we also know there's a lot of shareholders uh, in Hatalega. So good news for you guys. And what happened? Well, they have this plan called the Bestari Jaya plan, uh, which, you know, they're going to shut down and apparently there's going to be 347 million uh, impairment loss. So it's not like real loss. It's just paper loss. On paper losses. Yeah. yeah. And also they didn't include this, but there's actually another 70 million of uh, retrenchment costs. Those those employees that they have retrenched, yeah. So they right. got another cost, but that one will be recognized in financial year end twenty twenty four. Okay, so yes. if you look at their recent uh, quarterly reports, right, they actually announced a loss mm -hmm. about three hundred and three million. However, if you actually include the impairment loss, right, they are actually kind of making a profit right now, a very tiny profit, forty four million. So i think that's the one of the reason why the share price actually rally because if you exclude those impairment stuff it's actually like back to the black yeah uh but yes yeah, so that's why the share price actually rally and from what I, what I understand is that th this plan had been it's a very old plan yeah it's touted to be decommissioned for a long time already yes correct right, uh, because of their ngc that yes uh, uh because this the bestari jaya plan has been around since 2003 yeah, yeah, it's a very old plan. So yeah, they will be replacing it. Lah. And this is the investment bankers, uh, they are bullish or bearish thesis. So far, they are still quite bearish. I mean, even though they say that they're going to cut supply and everything, but uh, only one uh, investment bank is pretty uh, bullish, I would say, because you can see that the target price that they initiated is around 2 ringgit 38 cents, uh, which is by RHB. But generally, everybody is still like, you know, uh, the supply issue has not really solved yet. So there is still more like, uh, I still need to take time for the glove industry to show positive lah in the future. Yeah, yeah, but of course guys, uh, these are target prices set by usually sell side firms. So do, do watch but, out. Maybe yes. they are, you know, what they say and what they do can be two different things. Correct. Okay, so this is the final comments on Hata Lega. So number one is you need to know that the impairment losses of around 417 million is going to be recognized in financial year 2023. And then there's a retrenchment cost and also contract obligation, which is going to cost them around like 70 million, but it's going to recognize in uh, the next year, financial year 2024. Uh, and if you look at the supply, the production capacity that they did in the past versus now, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, it actually reduces quite a lot. So initially it's around 63 billion pieces. So right now, if you add on the NGC and the potential uh, production capa capacity that they're going to bring in in their NGC 1.5 is about 50 billion. So, uh, yeah, I mean, right now it's just, uh, I mean, uh, Hata Lega is the first company to actually, first big four, mm -hmm. they actually start to like really cut down on their existing yeah. production uh, capacity. So that actually shows you a strong message that the glove industry is actually still in a very dire place. They are still trying to get out of that oversupply uh, issue. And what Hata Lega did 
this, I think it is the right move. La. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they they rarely make wrong moves anyway. Mm. Until they go. Correct. And yeah, so the you know the market's forward looking. So my view is that uh we have to look six months or even one year ahead. Uh it could very well be the case that this is the bottom. Yep. It could exactly. very well be the case because uh you know, maximum pessimism, right? Yes. Hey guys, if you're interested in building a six to seven figure portfolio using the power of stock investing, head over to the comment section or the description to sign up for our free masterclass so that we share with you exactly how we do it. And speaking about bottom, right? This company is also actually oh, yeah. at the bottom. Oh yeah. So it is Emulus. I believe a, not many people actually covered about this uh, company. Uh, and why is because right now you can look at their share price. Of course, it is down like almost seventy five percent. Yeah. And it's actually at almost fifty two week low. Yeah. If you take a look at it. Yeah. This is what twenty eighteen prices. Yes. Exactly. Right? Oh, lower than actually twenty eighteen. Uh, mid lah. I would say mid to late. Oh, sorry, uh, from this angle, it looked like 2018. Yeah. And when I look here, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's back to like very pre pre pandemic uh, price point, <clears throat> which is pretty interesting. And let's have a look at what's happening. Okay, so the first one is that they reported their latest quarterly. Uh, two quarters, they actually reported losses. And their revenues have actually been dropping quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, now, if it narrowed down a little bit, the reason why it dropped is because of this uh, China market that they're actually serving. So you can see that in 20, uh, 2022, quarter two, 2022, yeah, and then 2021. Yeah, so there is actually a huge demand during that time. But right now, because all of, a lot of these semiconductor industries are kind of like cutting back on their capex, so which resulted a huge losses, especially for Amazon. Yeah, that's huge, man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, so it, sorry. So maybe yeah. I just read out. So that's fourteen million. Yes. dropping to like not even a million, one, about yeah, a million. Yeah, about a million, one point five. Yeah, that's quite a big drop, lah. I'll say. And uh, so this is the final comments. Is basically what I mentioned. Customers are holding back on capex, and the management is actually pretty. I'll say it's like a cautiously optimistic on their uh, future. Because okay. they say that the upside right now is just gonna be on the China's demand recovery. Yeah. And then they also did mention that assuming that the recovery starts to happen, right, it will bring like a the time frame that he said is around like three to six months, you show some like recovery in their uh, yeah. results. Uh. And yeah, from what I read, the management seems to be quite confident despite all of these uh, very bad and bearish sentiment, uh, which I kind of like think that maybe uh, Emil. Maybe this is the bottom. I'm not too sure yet, uh, which is why I'm still like uh, putting it under my watch list. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, we are not, when I speak to experts, at least in the field, they, they feel that the past six months, the the, the rise mm. because of uh, people saying that the feds are not going to raise rates suddenly, like they feel that that wave of profit is, is gone. Mm. I.e., it's not sustainable. It's a dead cat bounce. Some people say it, and really, if you look at the industry as a whole, it, a lot of people are like Amelia says they're holding back. They, they don't really want to invest a lot more. Very expensive. Um, reliance on China's demand recovery. That's the interesting one, because as you know, the opening up is not quite there yet, and they're also now a bit more reluctant to want to rely on someone outside the mm. country as, as a mood lah, right right so we will see but i don't think yeah we will see yes exactly but okay, guys before we move on if you're someone looking to level up their stock investing skills and you need a lot more guidance we do have a one-on-one -on -one program called the mentorship program if you're interested you can apply it in the comment section or the description Okay, so the final one is, I think a lot of people will be quite interested is because it is the uh, IPO craze. Ah. Uh, and this is the one of the research that I did very slightly only just to see like, um, what is the percentage of you guys can actually win from this IPO subscription yeah. during the first, like before the ballot. Okay, so uh, this, in case you guys didn't know, uh, there's about 15 companies actually went to IPO in 2023 alone. That's crazy, right? Yeah, in just a so span of like three, yeah, yeah. 
uh, three to four months period, uh, and then you got like fifteen companies, which is quite a lot. And if you look at all of these uh, companies' name, right, I believe around like ninety uh, over percent. If you subscribe to it and you manage to get the shares, you will actually tend to make money. It just depends on how much you make only. Yeah, and uh, in <laughs> if you actually Google oversubscribe, it's actually appearing uh, in every in almost like all of these IPO companies. Yeah, uh. crazy. So right? which is pretty crazy. Yeah, you can see that. We have like the, the, the most uh, smallest one I see is just DXN at the moment, which is about three times. But if you look at the most crazy one is about 167 times, which is also a quite recent company, Autocount, that we also uh, did cover in our video. But uh, generally, the I, the sentiment around IPO is like for sure make money on. Yeah. yeah. It's like a yeah, hundred percent. So why is that one blurred? Huh. Uh, okay, so that one is a, another company. It's not in Malaysia. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's in Australia. Okay, but the downside is if let's say you didn't manage to get that share and you decided to buy it when it goes public, right? This is the downside, lah. Is that you will be facing a uh, huge losses because right now uh, we are in a kind of a bearish uh, market right now, uh, and especially for tech companies. So if you notice, like Opstar or maybe even AutoCount, right, software in the, uh, software company, they are actually down massively after. IPO. Right. Yeah, about like 25 to 36%. So uh, that's why it's actually very dangerous if you are actually buying shares uh, when the IPO stocks goes public because it's already oversubscribed to like 100 times already. The prices are going up like 3 to 4x already. Yeah. Uh, I mean, definitely. Buying on day people. one is. Yeah, not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but there's still people who wants to buy on day one just to like try their luck, you know. But uh, yeah, generally this is just a advice if you're planning to buy after IPO, right, you need to know that the prices are pretty much overvalued. Most of the time it's overvalued. Okay, so, and this is the final one. Is basically we still have a lot of upcoming IPO yeah. in 2023. Uh, I think the next one is gonna be a furniture company. Yep, yep. Uh, Synergy Holdings, but I think. But by the time they watch this, the video will be out already. Yes, exactly. Video, video, yeah. Uh, and yeah, not only Synergy. I mean, there's still a lot more that there's that we're gonna anticipate lah. There's gonna be more. Yeah, companies which going means IPO. we are going to. Yeah, I mean it's. Technically, it's gonna be more content, lah. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> yeah, we'll but see. yeah, we'll see. But yeah, this is the final takeaway for all these three uh, companies and industries. So the first one is Hata Lega. Whether this is a right or wrong move, I think it's a right move. I don't know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments down below. Uh, Amelus, whether is this the bottom? I personally think it's already close or maybe even at the bottom already uh, but I could be wrong but this is definitely a company that I'm putting in my watch list and the last one it is pre and post IPO must do so pre IPO I mean there's definitely nothing to do like it's just that you buy you try your luck I mean because you have to go through a lot of balloting process also and then success rate of yeah. you getting the shares is around like 5% or even less than that unless you have like 1 million or 10 million cash and just put it even money. then so you're gonna get like a yeah, a small, but Very your tight. chances of getting more shares yeah, is like higher. La. Yeah. And post IPO, of course, if you plan to buy these companies, right, you need to know whether the valuation is still fair at that price. If it's not fair to you, then why bother even getting into it? So uh yeah, MJ, I think any more final words? Nope, that that's it. Uh guys don't treat it as a gambling tool, but uh you know what's not gambling, right? It is our Fire Pro. So Fire Pro, uh, we write reports for you to shortcut your research uh, to find potentially undervalued gems, maybe. And uh, here are some of the results that we've gotten so far. I think we started this portfolio somewhere in September. Uh, August, August 2022. August, yeah. 2022, it is nearly eight months now. Nine mm -hmm. months, almost nine months. Uh, so far, it has done okay, not too bad. And uh, we also have a smaller portfolio wow it's actually not uh it's a tag because the telegram portfolio we don't write reports on those you know because it's very time sensitive we don't have the time to write things like that um if you want to find out more just check out a free sample of our reports if you like it hope to see you in the program if you don't that's fine as well thanks for the support as always and i will see you in the next video